Get Smart, Lessons from the Artist, Andy Warhol. I've always loved Andy Warhol's art, and I think we can learn a lot from him, um, both as teachers, as creators, and as learners ourselves. When it comes to creativity, I love serendipity and what it can offer. Andy did too, and he said, when you do something exactly wrong, you always turn up something. So flaunt your fails and marvel at your mistakes. Andy once quipped, I think everybody should like everybody. And you know, that's really important when you're working with students or in a team, because the least lovable often need the most love. One of my favorite things Andy espoused was, you don't have to explain yourself. And sometimes when you make things, you feel like you have to defend it, but it's so freeing if you, if you don't. So have a few projects out there that you don't explain. They're just for you. As a former history teacher, I totally agree with treasuring the past. Andy's famous for keeping these time capsules of ephemera from his daily life. Find something that you can keep too, a place, maybe a journal or a box, or a Wunderkammerin, which is a wonder cabinet. That you can treasure these items and reminisce and learn from them. Because he said the idea is not to live forever, it's to create something that will. This guides me daily, I'd say, um, just having a legacy out there, just making something that will last beyond me and my name. Think in themes. I like to, to structure curriculum around themes because it makes more sense for students. Now, Andy liked to do variations on a theme. He felt there was power in repetition. In fact, his quote is that, his fascination with letting images repeat and repeat, or in film's case, run on, manifests his belief that we spend much of our lives seeing without observing. And that leads us right into sort of mindfulness, right? Observe, not just look at something. Themes help us see connections between often disparate subjects. Life is too short and too long. And he said, people need to be made more aware of the need to work at learning how to live because life is so quick and sometimes it goes away too quickly. So stop fretting about the small stuff and focus on the big picture. Why not live in the so what? Andy noted that sometimes people let the same problem make them miserable for years when they could just say, so what? That was one of his favorite things to say, so what? I like the word so what because I think it's great for education when you're teaching to really pull out the so what of a subject and, and question its importance and its relevance to students' lives. This also helps students form their arguments. Paying attention to the mundane things in life often leads to insights and creativity. And he said, sometimes the little times you don't think are anything while they're happening turn out to be what marks a whole period in your life. So be wary of grandiose expectations. He had this little story about traveling to a party in a car, and all he could remember was the car ride, not the party. And I think that puts it in perspective for us. Treasure those little moments, the, the daily occurrences, because they can often lead to bigger things. Try living in the moment, because those moments add up and often lead to something profound. In education and technology, there's a lot of talk about curation, about carefully selecting things and contextualizing them with annotations and commentary. Andy collected people things. He curated experiences. And I think we can learn a lot from this sort of aesthetic of curation. Because with the information deluge out there, it's important for us to select carefully and piece together vignettes that make sense to us. Do you ever wonder about those soup cans that Andy painted? Well, he actually loved Campbell's tomato soup. And he loved money, he said, so hence the money uh, paintings as well. So his subjects were the things he loved, and I think this is important to remember, that we need to find our niche, the things we're passionate about, because that's our true selves, and whenever we're honest with our true passions, we do great things. And he really popularized remix culture by appropriating existing art and 
creating something new, recontextualizing, adding new meaning. But it's important to note that he didn't just copy and steal. He transformed. He saw things in new ways, and he made us look at them differently. And that's the heart of remix. And remix is the heart of creativity. Jason Silva says awe is the best drug in the world. And I truly believe that we should be awed by the ordinary. And he said you need to let the little things that would ordinarily bore you suddenly thrill you. So we get his famous Brillo box stacks. So what can you find in your daily life, in, your, in the mundane world, that suddenly delights you and thrills you and gives you a new perspective on things? You're probably familiar with Andy's Polaroids. You know, he tended to tinker and try and test as much as he could. The Polaroid company actually gave him special cameras made just for him to play with. So I think this fearlessness in, in experimenting with, in Andy's case, photography, film, and prints leads to much better things. This leads to innovation, really. So we need to try to tinker. So what's your Polaroid camera? What are you going to tinker with and play with, experiment with, and change up in your classroom, in your life? Andy would often host what he called happenings. You know, this word happening is kind of an example of a euphemism. It, it makes something sound a lot more exciting than maybe it even is. I think if we approach our classrooms as a happening or our teamwork as a happening, it's just a, a much better approach, really, to have it be something special. So one of the things I tried in my classroom was to call it studio over work time. So you'd have a studio day rather than a work day, and you would be a designer rather than a student or a worker. And this really helped shape the student's attitude towards what we were doing, and they considered themselves to be artists then. One of the most poignant quotes by Andy is, I never fall apart because I never fall together. And while that might seem melancholy to some, for me, it's about living lightheartedly, to not take things too seriously, especially not take yourself too seriously. If you can infuse humor and lightheartedness into your work, I guarantee it will be better. Your internal editor and also the pressures of external critique will just disappear and your work will become more productive and more colorful, really. Well, it's no secret that Andy Warhol definitely went against the grain of the norm. I think there's a great lesson to be learned from being faithful and true to yourself, to who you are, to what your beliefs are, to your persona, even when it's not fashionable. Don't cave in to the crowd. Think out loud and live proud. Everybody's familiar with Andy Warhol as the father of the pop art movement. He definitely made his own movement, and I challenge everybody to do so in their own way. He said, you have to do stuff that average people don't understand because those are the only good things. So next time you're feeling wary about this, remember those words of advice. What will your movement be? You might be familiar with Andy Warhol's The Factory, but also think of a factory in these terms. It's a production house. Keep making. He said, don't think about making art. Just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. But in the meantime, while they're deciding, make even more art. This quote really fuels my creativity personally, but I think it would be a great lesson for students as well. Especially as teenagers, they're very concerned about critique and, and peer pressure. But you don't have to worry about that if you just keep making. Because Andy knew the secret. The more you make, the better you get. It's not only practice, but there's a better chance that you'll have more to choose from that's excellent work. Everybody needs a creative space, and everybody's is different. Now, Andy had the factory. Charlie Parker had a woodshed where he retreated in solace to hone his craft. Jazz musicians still use that term today. I challenge everybody to think about what makes students more creative, what will stimulate their creativity and their confidence, and develop a classroom that is conducive to that. Thank you, Andy, for all the wisdom 
and of course, the art that challenged and delighted us. 